Well, thanks for having me on. Look, it's it's interesting we're talking about the 50-day moving average. Fact is, the S&P has been in a very steady uptrend for the last year. And, and all summer long, we've seen these tags of the 50 MA. But more importantly is the trends. That was a very established technical uptrend. That actually got broken today. It was kind of on the cusp on Friday. And when you see these large uptrends in the in past years, they have typically resulted in larger drawdowns. Now, in 2018, for example, the NASDAQ broke that trend and then retested it and made a slight new high even before then we even got a larger 20% correction. So what we'll have to see is now how support levels uh, fundamentally see this market hold vis-a-vis -vis, uh, larger volatility still coming in. Keep in mind, this market has been very extended for a long time now since the March lows. It's been a steady uptrend, and uh, there's a very high valuations in, in this market at this point. So, Sven, what are the technicals that you're watching right now to understand or to predict whether this is a smaller pullback or really a full correction? Well, the first one I'm looking at is actually the monthly five exponential moving average, which is about uh, 43.25, which coincides with the daily 100 MA. This is confluence support. So if that holds, we could have a kind of a like 2013 repeat, which was exactly the same thing. We had a lot of central bank intervention and support. And uh, the 100 MA, first 100 MA dip that year was bought rigorously. So we're, we're not too far from that. So that's a support area I'm looking at. Should that ultimately fail, uh, then you have larger risk into back to look towards 4,000. That is where you have the quarterly five EMA. This is all a journey now. People need to recognize this. None of these things are in a straight line. We broke the 50 MA. We broke the trend. So what we have to see on any future rallies, for example, we have the Fed meeting again this week, whether those uh, levels then present themselves as resistance. Because so far, everybody's used to every dip being bought and then producing new highs. So we need to look for a change in the character in the market, for example. Yeah, to that point, Sven, about uh, pattern recognition, I do wonder uh, whether or not you are expecting maybe a more dovish taper guide this week from the Fed than maybe the market thinks. And would the market then take its cue from that? Well, I've, I've long said, you know, whenever markets get, uh, get a cold, uh, the Fed's tends to <laughs> pull back on, on any uh, hawkish uh, expectations that might be. Uh, this is still a very small pullback. I think the larger issue for me is confidence in the Fed itself. It's gotten on a lot of pressure in the last couple of weeks with the reports of trading from Fed governors them, themselves. And, and, and the question you have to ask yourself is, you know, in context of so much money having been piled into markets, um, you, you know, can you can you expect a cascading effect? Don't don't forget, margin debt was at record highs this summer as well, and just started rolling over as well. And the Fed has shown time and time again that it is very reactive to markets, especially on on the downside. Are you surprised that um, that high yield has not responded in a more made more of a statement uh, today, given the equity sell off? No, not really. I mean, I, I, I've not seen high yields. Uh, I mean, it's been tag for tag with the equity markets as well. There was a divergence in, in the summer that hasn't really produced anything as of yet. I'm, I'm personally just not too convinced of the bond market signaling power in this environment. I mean, we can't forget the central banks continuing to buy and, and sit on, on, on the yield curve. So it's, it's, it's hard to say if that's it's a valid signal at, at this point, one way or the other.